Hi, welcome to this week's Rhett vlog. And, um, yes, I'm Hord. Lost my best transmog. My captain's hat is gone. Uh, nah. So I'll carry on with this for a bit and then probably switch to the Lightbringer mog. But, you know. Now I've got to learn how to use Arcane Torrent again. Absolute disaster. Anyway, never mind that. So what we're going to be doing today is having a look at how people who don't have access to SimCraft, and it's not as straightforward as it might seem, can at least not make all the retarded comments that they are on forums and in videos with just some very, very basic maths. So, running along similar themes to the last few weeks where we've been talking about a lot of the misinformation that's getting out there, both on the videos that seem to be coming daily now about people who don't know anything about Rep Paladins but think they do, uh, or at least just pretending they do, or as well as on forums where you've actually got Rep Paladins who, again, are not paying the slightest bit of attention. So what I'm going to do here is, obviously, I understand that not everyone has access to SimCraft. I don't, because you have to build your own modules for the BFA. It's not like in live, where, although it might not look that friendly, it's okay once you get into it. You can try various things out, sim it out, it's all fine. You've got to build your own module in SimCraft. There's only a few people doing that, you know, and although I get to talk to them, uh, a lot of other people, well, you still get to talk to them if you want to, but a lot of people choose not to. Um, so is there an easier way, instead of just looking at a tooltip and going, oh, yeah, uh, this is clearly weak and this is clearly really good, is there a way of working out? Yes, there is. We can use very, very simple math to at least get a ballpark figure. It's quite crude compared to SimCraft. The main difference between... Uh, using uh, some more basic maths to investigate things. And SimCraft is SimCraft will work out when realistically you would use it. It can deal with dynamic values a lot more easily as well, such as increasing haste values, crusade, things like that. So I'm going to tackle Hammer of Wrath first of all, and then the, con the Consecration thing later on. So with Hammer of Wrath, so the issue we were a couple of weeks ago, the problem with it was is it looks quite weak. It did not look as if it's the sort of thing you want to be using as high priority uh, when it was available to us of Engine Wrath. Uh, in particular but it was uh, and the reason it was because it reduced clashes I've talked about that before uh, in past videos but it and uh, it's absolutely true to say it was not intuitive you looked at it and thought it's a bit weak for something we can only use now and then is it really worth taking as a talent because you know um, it surely can't be high priority because only sims would let you know that it was so what they did was they buffed it and they increased the cooldown, the base cooldown. So the overall strength of Hammer of Wrath as a talent remained the same. But it now looked better. But we're still, when you look at it, it just looks like it's about on par. It's still not the, oh my god, yes, I definitely want to use this. So Sephir's, our, our dev, is, is looking at, and it sounds like he's really thinking about because he obviously, you know, he, he's noting that the community really don't think it does enough damage. So he's looking at it and going, well, what if I increase the um, damage? So if you increase the damage any more, it's surely going to be, especially by 20%, it's, it's clearly going to look like it's a bit special. But then increase the cooldown to go with it so that it doesn't get out of kilter. That would mean a nine-second baseline cooldown. Now, it sounds great because, all right, it's going to have a longer cooldown but it's going to do more damage. It'll look like it does more damage. So even to someone who doesn't uh, like investigate it properly or use sims, it'll look great. Win-win situation. Unfortunately not. Uh, the problem is, again, is monkeying about with things. There's all sorts of various haste breakpoints and things like that that suddenly emerge. Because that's the thing when it comes to Hammer of Wrath. Something that's only usable at certain points, like in, in Windows, like Avenging Wrath, for example, whenever you've got something like that, particularly when it's powerful, that means haste breakpoints come into it. Because, you know, above a certain amount of haste, you can get an extra use out of it, and then that becomes much stronger. So, what I've done is I've done some maths comparing, for reasonable haste levels, uh, the current situation which we have now, which is 7.5 second baseline cooldown, and what is proposed 9 second baseline cooldown. During Avenging Wrath. Now, I'm just going to follow this up by explaining that during Avenging Wrath, we have to remember, although I'm going to assume we're going to use Hammer of Wrath straight away, it won't technically be 0 seconds because there's a global cooldown on Avenging Wrath now. So we'll actually have to wait for that global cooldown to finish 
before we can actually go into our Hammer of Wrath. So that'll throw things, just bear that in mind when we're looking at these. So I'm assuming 10% haste at the moment. Haste is not easy to come by. So about 10% haste, okay? Uh, that's without using Inquisition or something like that. Let's say you prefer to use Divine Purpose or something. So what that means is with the 7.5 second uh, cooldown, which we have at the moment, 10% haste would give you a realistic 6.8 second cooldown. So that means you use it straight away after Avenging Wrath, then you use it on 6.8 seconds. Remember, it'll actually be slightly after. Then 13.6 seconds, and then, okay, we can't use it on 20.5 seconds. Avenging Wrath has run out, so we're going to get, you know, three uses of it. So then we look at the nine second one, all right? Um, you know, so that one's going to be used on naught, 8.2 seconds, 16.4 seconds. So we're going to get three uses for both of them. So in that particular case, it makes no difference. It's just that, you know, it's it's going to look better. In that situation, we go, there's no real problem. So then what we do is I'm just going to up the haste to 15%. Let's say we can get up to 15%. So now what's going to happen is... Again, we're probably realistically not going to get our fourth use out um, on the 7.5 second cooldown because 19.6 seconds sort of looks like if you really bang it, you can just sneak it out. But there is that global cooldown on Avenging Wrath. Oh, you know, causing a problem here, Blizzard. Um, but at the same time, you know, that just means um, that with the 9 second cooldown, though, we're not going to get that uh, fourth one out at all. We can't actually realistically get that one out of turn. So you're going to get three uses still from each one. So let's say we get up to about 15% haste and we use Inquisition. Now I'm going to assume that Inquisition even gets nerfed down to 5%. I don't think it'll get nerfed down that much, but I don't know. So I'm going to say an overall haste level of 20%. That is a combination, because let's say we're not, because Crusade messes the whole thing up because it, obviously it's variable haste. So let's assume um, haste level of 20%, that includes Inquisition. Uh, so that's either 12% baseline haste and 8% as it is now, or some combination. In this situation, now realistically, as long as we use it, as soon as it's available, Hammer of Wrath, we can now sneak four Hammers of Wrath out. If it stays as it is now, but if the baseline uh, cooldown is increased to nine seconds, uh, yeah, nine seconds, we still can't get the fourth one out. Now we're losing a whole use of Hammer of Wrath, and that's going to make, at those haste levels, the talent much weaker. And I also want people to bear in mind, we're not realistically going to get more than 20% haste because the problem with that is um, that the gear is just not going to be there for it early on. Later on in the expansion, you could argue it will be, but then you could always say the Blizzard do change the way abilities work through an expansion anyway. Maybe later on, you know, they might even muck about with the cooldowns on these things. So I'm not worried about later on in the expansion. I'm not worried about them future-proofing this because they'll monkey about with things through the expansion anyway. They showed that in Legion. I'm worried about in the, the early days, the early months of this, and I'm looking at it and thinking, we're going to get, we can easily get our, well, not easily, we can get our haste to a situation where we're going to get four uses of Hammer of Wrath if it stays as it is now, but only three uses of Hammer of Wrath uh, as it stays there. And remember that the overall damage per second of Hammer of Wrath is not changing. That's not on the table because it's fine as it is now. It's competitive as it is now. It actually makes it, in a lot of situations, the talent to take as it is now. Because that's what people don't understand. They think it's weaker than Blade of Wrath. It's not. So losing a whole Hammer of Wrath means that the DPS value of the talent suddenly plummets. So let's have a look, you know, let's say you've got joint heroism at that point. So we'll add on an extra 50% haste there. And I do mean heroism, I know I'm hoard now. I still mean heroism, that's still what I'm going to call it. So in this particular situation, you can actually have a situation or join heroism and your inquisition up and all the rest of it, where you can get five uses of Hammer of Wrath out, but you can still only get four with the nine second version. So even during heroism at this point, it's not going to even itself out. We're always going to be losing a Hammer of Wrath. And that's why I'm not in favour of this change at all. Uh, I have sort of contacted the, the dev to say that myself. At the same time, I, I do understand the issue with it because you look at Hammer of Wrath and you're thinking, okay, well, it looks okay, but would I really use it ahead of something like Judgment Blade of Justice? And you look at it and you think, well, maybe I wouldn't. But in actual fact, you should. But the only people who will know that you should are people who sort of watch guides 
which I will be having out before uh, the pre-patch goes live, and people who use sims and things like that. So people who don't do it, just looking at it intuitively, are going to think, hmm. Uh, but this is the problem. So what I'm showing you here is, as I say, a simple set of maths that you can do to investigate this yourself. Now, I've just been talking about this at length, because I'm not happy about this at all. Um, and we're talking about the effect with Crusade on it as well. This change could also cause some issues with Crusade, where there might, in theory, be a point, a haste point, at which... Crusade allows you to get a fifth use of Hammer of Wrath out of it, in which case we end up back. If we're going to use Hammer of Wrath, we sort of have to take Crusade. Now, I'm again, I'm not sure. The haste values required to do that are probably not obtainable, or it, it seems to me, from what I'm being told, in terms of the haste we can get, probably not obtainable in from the first raid, or Mythic Plus Dungeons, whatever. Um, so we're talking about a problem later down the line, and as I say, later down the line, they muck about with things anyway. So, you know, in the here and now, I don't think that necessarily will be a big issue. But it could be down the line, which also might mean that they muck about with Crusade. And then, any t you know, getting into a situation where they then have to start retuning Crusade to take account of this just sounds like more mess than it's worth. Um, so that's why, personally, even though I get that it's not intuitive to use Hammer of Wrath as it is now, I'm not in favour of that that proposed change at the same time i am fearing that it's going to be made maybe you'll enjoy it maybe you'll like it i don't know i really hope you don't know so i'm going to show another one now and this is to do with the consecration because someone was who posts a lot on the forums but you know very bright um was talking about consec again it's the usual oh consecration is really weak and it, it baffles me and and again if it was just the case of consecration might look weak but actually it's strong when you do it in sims then i'd understand it at least it'd still be wrong and i wish people wouldn't spread the misinformation because the information's out there there are sims on the uh, paladin discord that's acts open to everyone who goes on there but the um but at least i would understand it but actually you can do some quite basic maths and realize that actually you're talking of rubbish so what i did here is I went on to my level 120 Paladin on the beat, and I got some values. And I looked at Consecration. Now, the way Consecration works, just to bring up to speed with these abilities now, because they both work, Consecration and Wake of Ashes both work differently to in life. So, Consecration, you drop it down. It has a 20-second cooldown, not affected by haste, but it does its damage over six seconds. So, that's lots better now, because all the argument about, oh, your mobs might move out of it. No, no, no. Six seconds. You can keep your mobs in for six seconds. Your mobs are not going to die. You're getting much better use of it. The problem with consecration, as it's been in the past, is if if the duration is equal to like the cooldown of it, then that is why where, you, where your problem is. You know, mobs dying or move being moved out or something like that. But over six seconds, you know, that's the time when you can have your tank plant your feet. And then you know the issue. I've said this before. The issue of tanks just grabbing a load of stuff and carrying on running. Well, the threat reduction should see to that. So the tanks are going to have to stand and form their ball of death. Um, so Consecration is going to look good from that. But we're talking about this, you know, from a single uh, target point of view. People just look at Consecration and go, oh, it's AoE. Oh, therefore it must be weak for single target, for general boss use. No, because all of that rose AoE. But all of it can be used for single target as well. And Consecration is actually, at the moment, the strongest. So what we do, and but that's with Sims. But let's have a look how we can do it without Sims. Because the problem with that, with what we're going to do now, just one last final point before we get into it, is that when we're doing this sort of maths we're going to be doing, it assumes ideal conditions. It assumes you're using it on cooldown and all the rest of it, uh, which isn't always true. Whereas Sims can actually put these things together and go, actually, well, with the action priority list you've given me, it would be used like this. So, Consecration... On that paladin has a does a damage of 5.45 uh, 5145 damage sorry over those six seconds has a cooldown of 20 seconds so we can work out an average dps for it so what we do is we say okay you know average dps there uh, over the 20 seconds not over the six seconds remember the cool you know so we can do that damage every 20 seconds even though it's loaded up into six seconds uh, but that's not the only benefit of it it generates a holy power so we have to quantify that holy power so we'll say okay that holy power is worth a third of a templar's verdict in single target because we'd probably use it on templar's verdict 
So what we say is that uh, we think we work out the time taken to generate three holy power, because that's what we need for a Templar's verdict. And in this case, in the case of consecration, it's 60 seconds. Then I do the damage of a Templar's verdict, which is 6037. And then I work out the DPS contribution from the holy power, you know, saying, well, it could contribute a Templar's verdict every 60 seconds, damage divided by 60. And then I add up the two DPS values. And for consecration, I get about 358. Now onto Wake of Ashes. So the way Wake of Ashes works, similar to in live, uh, it doesn't do a dot or anything like that. You use it, instant cast, cone in front of you, that uh, does a certain amount of damage, generates five holy power, can be used every 45 seconds. Again, cooldown, not reduced by haste, very similar to Consecrate. So in this case, it does 7350 damage, so it's more damage, but a longer cooldown. 45 second cooldown. So that puts it in an average DPS there of 163. Okay, significantly less than Consecration but it generates more holy power. And even with the greater uh, cooldown, it's still generating more holy power per second type thing. So the time taken this time for three holy power is 27 seconds. So we work all this out and we get, okay. So now when we do the DPS contribution by the holy power, and we add it all up, we get 387 DPS. Well, that's more than consecration. So we're looking at Wake of Ashes being better than consecration. But here's the thing. Is it that much more? No, it's not. It's not that much more. So can you call Consecration weak as a result of this? No, you can't. And actually, as I say, when you sim it, you'll actually find that Consecration comes out on top. Now, why is that? Well, we can even explore that a little bit. So again, what's our assumptions here? We're assuming that we're using these things on cooldown. All right, well, we could, we could arrange to do that. Secondly, we're also assuming that we're getting, in the case of Consecration, one Holy Power, and in the case of Wake of Ashes, five Holy Power. But here's the thing, with, with Consecration, we can say, yeah, we can arrange for that. With Wake of Ashes, that means we have to have our Holy Power completely drained when we use it. Can we always make sure, without you know losing damage elsewhere, that we've always got zero Holy, holy Power every 45 seconds? No, we can't. That's very, very unusual rare even. So let's look at another couple of situations. Let's say that we're likely to have one holy power. So Wake of Ashes at this point is only contributing four holy power now. So now we do the same sums and we work out that if, if we say that Wake of Ashes is only actually going to contribute four holy power because we already had one, you can use Wake of Ashes with one holy power, not a problem then the actual DPS of Wake of Ashes is estimated to be about 342. That's now less than Consecration. So let's say we look at it a different way and we think, well, okay, let's just not use Wake of Ashes then. We'll build a couple, spend, and then use Wake of Ashes. So we are on zero. So we get those five holy power. Well, that means delaying it a few seconds. So let's say we delay it by five seconds and we do the same maths. Now, okay, it's looking a little bit better. We get 348 DPS. It's still less than Consecrate. And, and that's the thing, you know, you, even when you do very simplistic maths, it's very, very crude compared to actually using SimCraft, you've still got to be aware of your assumptions. You're making assumptions with things like this. And you have to be aware of them and try and take account of them and try and consider what are the effects of my assumptions on my values and then try out a few other little variations as well. And with simple school level maths, you can easily see the nonsense in a lot of the stuff that people are saying on forums and videos. And does it take long to do that? No, it doesn't. This is proper napkin maths. And, and the, the outrageous claims that have been made should be completely impossible. And you don't need to build your own SimCraft module to do it. That is obviously gonna get you a much closer to accurate values and, and conclusions. But even with something as simple as this, as long as you're aware of your assumptions and as long as you're accounting for things, it's very straightforward. So anyway, hopefully that was a little bit of interest to you. Hopefully I've got you out getting your pencils and calculators out now uh, or spreadsheets, which much better does it a lot easier. Um, thanks for watching. If you've got any comments, do put them down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications as well. Like the video if you enjoyed it as well. Share it with anyone else who may be interested, including especially the people who don't seem to have a clue about these things. And until next time, I'll see you later.